So, you want to be a closer. What are the essential elements that you need to be a closer? What are the tactics you need to master, to be persuasive? Did you know that a true closer, the professional, doesn't sell? He or she gets qualified prospects to want to buy. What's the difference? What's happening good, everybody? Eli's dad, once again, with Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. The successful closer in sales is able to perform when the game is on the line. He's able to get the hit that scores the run in the bottom of the ninth inning. He's clutch. Listen carefully from the on-deck circle as I make my pitch to Eli at home plate. Eli, as we've discussed previously in our sales lessons, there are three types of prospects. The first is the one that will never buy from you no matter what. The second is the one where the fit for your product or service is so good that they will buy from you no matter what. And the third, that's the one that's on the fence. That is, that may or may not buy from you. Now obviously, what you're looking for is to be in front of as many laydowns, prospect number two, that you can. Question, can you create prospect number two, the laydown? The answer is a resounding yes. Today, we will talk about creating number twos from number threes, the prospect on the fence, and also how to close the prospect on the fence. Fair enough? Let's start with creating a laydown. Very simple, Eli. I will have to assume that you have listened to and owned our previous lessons on approach, warm-up, presentation, and close already. If you haven't, go back and listen to them. Now, the professional salesperson understands that a sale is a cumulative thing. It's a staircase where one advances one small step at a time. As you and your prospect are climbing this staircase together, you're gathering information about each other. To be successful, you may only advance to the next step when your client has agreed with each point that you're making. That portion of the sales process comes about halfway up the staircase. On the first half of the staircase, you're establishing rapport, gathering information, and mentally formulating a game plan that will enable your product or service to satisfy the needs that your client is seeking. You are finding the hot buttons that will make your client anxious to buy what is needed because you are tailoring your presentation to match those particular needs. Hey Eli, this may sound complicated, but it isn't. Why? Because most of the people that you're going to be speaking to have somewhat similar needs and desire a somewhat similar solution to fill those needs. After all, the product or service that you're selling is not designed to prevent nuclear war and effectively cook a turkey at the same time. There's going to be some element of specialization that you and or your company can provide that your client is seeking, or you wouldn't be talking with that prospect. Your presentation contains all of the things that your product or service can provide. Your job is to match all the features, advantages, and benefits of what you're selling with the particular needs of your client. That is what we mean by individualizing your presentation, by personalizing it for an individual person or an individual company. Now, just as the tailor tailors clothes to fit his individual client, you tailor your closes, your step-by-step, short, choppy sentences that get agreements with your client, don't you? Now, my young sales professional, that is how you create a laydown. You get agreement after agreement after agreement. At the end, when they agree with everything that you said, there's only one logical conclusion. And that makes sense, true? Now, Fred, to get you started, 
I just need to gather some information. Is your first name officially Fred or Frederick? And then you start writing on the application. Assume the yes, because they've agreed with everything you've said, and the only logical thing for them to do is to move forward and buy your product or service, right? Ask a question that needs to be filled out on the application. Pull out your pen and start writing. Don't look at the client. Look at the application. And when they answer your question with, my official name is Fred, they bought. Now you can look up and continue to ask questions that you need answered to complete the application. This is how you create a laydown. Agreement after agreement confirmed. The only logical conclusion is that they want their problem solved. They told you so. Ask a confirming question that needs to be written on the application. They see you pull out the app. They see you with a pen in your hand. They know what you're doing. Let's put this another way. When the little boy at the lemonade stand gets confirmation that Mr. Jones wants a glass of lemonade, he sticks out his hands and assumes that Mr. Jones will put some currency in it, right? When your client answers an application question, he's bought. This technique may seem awkward to you at first, Eli, but it is merely a rite of passage in the wonderful world of sales. Just as asking a girl out on a date was awkward the first time, or stepping into the batter's box for the first time in an official game was awkward, or leaning in to get your first kiss was awkward, it's a rite of passage. Let me tell you a secret. This one aspect of sales is a super positive for you. Here's why. Like other rites of passage, it's easier than you thought. And you're going to say to yourself, why was I so fearful? This one act performed by very few people is what makes sales a highly compensated profession. It takes no more courage, no more guts than any other rite of passage. And when you're successful, you'll feel as fulfilled as you felt when you got your first kiss. Well, almost. Business owners know that without sales, there is no business. That's why the salesperson, the seller, makes more, <clears throat> excuse me, makes more than the installer. Aren't we all looking for a skill that we possess that will compensate us like we desire and deserve? It's easy. We are, aren't we? And if the prospect stops you from filling out the application, that is what we're going to talk about next. Closing. Persuading the prospect on the fence to come on aboard. This is where the professional salesperson separates himself or herself from the order takers. Here is an important fact that every professional knows. It is that the typical sale does not get closed until the fourth or fifth attempt when the client initially says no. Remember, if you've gotten all of your step-by-step -step agreements along the way, there is no logical reason why the client shouldn't buy. So, why does that happen? Why is the client hesitating? Here's why. This scenario happens when you are talking with an amateur. You see, Eli, when you're speaking with quote-unquote civilians, they're not used to making buying decisions. People tend to procrastinate, don't they? This scenario is not the same as going to the grocery store. People, civilians, are comfortable in that scenario through repetition. Your job, Mr. Eli, Mr. Professional, is to make them feel comfortable. This is where your professionalism comes into play. Relax. You did a good job. 
if you follow the step-by-step -step process that we've given you, approach, warm-up, presentation, and step-by-step, -step, getting the little agreements, the small but essential closes. Once again, you're asking a civilian to fly the plane for the first time. Guess what? They may need a co-pilot. That's you. Remember, you're there to help them, not to hurt them. If there is a genuine need for your product or service by your prospect, you need to help them. Let's return to working with an upset, confused child. What's the first thing you do to calm the child down? Do you assume an aggressive, intense posture or attitude or manner of speech? You don't. Am I right about that? What you do is to assume a relaxed posture, a calm attitude, and a slow speech pattern, right? You do the same thing here. See, big guy, I told you you've done this stuff before. You just got to mature it up a bit. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, the first thing that you do is to lean back in your chair. You see, leaning forward is aggressive body language. If someone comes up to you, Eli, with a clenched fist, what kind of posture do you assume? You tense up your body and assume attack mode to defend yourself, right? If you want the troubled little boy to relax, if you want your client to relax, you must be relaxed. You will find that your client will mirror your posture. Posture is step one. It is critical that you lean back. No problem, little boy. Daddy is here and the situation is under control. Next comes the calm attitude. When you show calmness to the little boy, he too calms down, right? Same here. Remove the tension. Why should you be tense, Eli? You're a sales professional, and you know that your clients are amateurs. They're civilians. You expect them to have some anxiety about buying because they're not at the grocery store where they're comfortable. When a professional encounters an expected scenario, it is their expertise in that field that keeps them calm. Using myself as an example, whenever anything puts my car out of commission, I get a serious case of the uh-ohs. Why? Because I don't know diddly about cars. When I bring the car to my trusted repair shop, where they have repeatedly treated me with respect and fairness, their attitude is always calm and under control. Why? Because they are experts and they've seen the scenario before. Their calmness eases my anxiety. Be the professional. You know what to expect. Be calm. It's contagious. Finally, when you do speak, speak slowly as you would speak to the troubled little boy. Make your points the same way that you did in your presentation. Short, choppy sentences like you would to the little boy. Okay, calm down, daddy's here. Now tell me what happened so that I may help you. Come here, let me wipe away those tears. Tell daddy what happened. Guess what you do? The same thing with your client, except you mature it up a bit. Am I starting to sound like a broken record? You've done this before, isn't that great? Leaning back in your chair, you, the expert, the professional, say, slowly, calmly, I can appreciate that, Fred. May I ask you a question? Get their permission to close them, to help them. Was there any particular aspect of the product or service that was unclear? Because I tried to explain everything clearly. Did I do a good job explaining all the features, advantages, and benefits? Did you hear, Eli, where I didn't pause after the word unclear? You want to get your client back in the mode of nodding in agreement. 
Remember, they like you. You warmed them up properly. You gave a great presentation. They said yes every time you asked for an agreement. It's not you, Eli. They feel anxiety because they are amateurs. Listen again. Was there any particular aspect of the product or service that was unclear? Because I tried to explain everything clearly. Did I do a good job explaining all the features, advantages, and benefits? Make sure that you ask a question like that to confirm that they understood everything and that they like you. Oh, it's not you, Eli. It's us. We are the amateurs. We are the ones not used to making a decision. We're much more comfortable procrastinating because that's what amateurs do. Eli, they may not use those exact words, but that is what they're saying. Let me make a point or two here. This is where the professional excels. When you know it's going to rain, bring an umbrella. Next time that we get together, we're going to open that umbrella. I don't want you to get wet, Eli. You might catch cold. The second point I want to make is this. When you're making a business-to-business -business presentation, you won't have an objection caused by anxiety because the potential buyer is not an amateur. They're not a civilian. Your prospect is a professional, too. They're comfortable buying. They're comfortable making decisions. When you get an objection from a professional, it's going to be concrete. You either can solve it or you can't. You will only need to calm down the little boy, the civilian, when you're speaking to Fred and Ethel. If you know what to expect, do you think you're going to come prepared? Of course you will. I'm going to show you how to close. We need to think it over next time we get together. That's the number one objection that you're going to get from Fred and Ethel Mertz. In fact, you're going to look forward to hearing that objection, the most common roadblock, because you're going to have the ammunition to overcome it. Now, to make sure that you don't miss that and other closing techniques, be sure to click the subscribe icon and the bell for notification. I remind you once again that repetition means retention. Nobody becomes a professional by listening to something one time only. May I suggest again that you learn new material the same way that I did and still do. My mom taught me that silence means consent. I listen to the material of substance repeatedly while I'm driving from place to place. I turn quantity time into quality time. It's a very easy and simple way to learn when you do it repetitively. Our thought for the day then is this. Good habits are easy to do and easy not to do. You are your habits and then your habits become you. And because we never end a meeting on a philosophical note, let's get out there, take action, and charge! I'm Eli's dad.